So when they come in on the first day of patch testing, they get the patches applied to their back. That's the place that we usually apply them is to the back because it has the most flat surface area. Um, so we can ap apply the patches. These are not prick tests. No needles are used. Um, they're just stuck to the skin with adhesive tape. It's um, hypoallergenic tape. So the patient is less likely to have a rash to you know, the thing that we're testing them with. So they come in usually on a Monday, get the patches applied. They keep the patches on for two days. They come back for another appointment on Wednesday with the nurse, that's a nursing appointment. They get the patches removed. The nurse does a preliminary reading on that Wednesday appointment. And then they return on Friday for the final reading. Um, they no longer have the patches in place. However, there is a final reading on that day five or Friday reading. Um, the nurse, the resident, and myself all participate in those appointments, those Friday appointments, and that's where the patient really finds out what they were allergic to. Uh, we give them a lot of information on what the substances are that they're allergic to. Um, this includes the name of the substance, different uh, synonyms or names that that allergen could go by, where you could find it in your environment with an extensive list of you know, specific things that they might be looking for, soaps, shampoos, things in their work environment, um, their shoes sometimes can cause uh, these rashes. And then we give them a safe product list as well. So uh, we have a, access to a special database where we can enter in a patient's specific allergens and then it provides a list of safe products. So they're given a list of safe shampoos, a list of safe soaps, a list of safe moisturizers, a list of safe makeups um, if they um, wear makeup. I do have a small subset of patients that Despite um, avoiding their allergens, they still have problems with significant breakout. There's a number of reasons why that might happen. The first is that you know perhaps they're not able to avoid all of their allergens, all of the substances they're allergic to. An example of that would be I have some patients that are hairstylists or hairdressers. You know, they make a living by touching some of these chemicals. You know, um, fragrances in the shampoos or the hair dyes that they're applying. Um, you know, and they, they try to wear gloves as much as they can, but there's just um, some amount that they're not able to avoid. And so that's a scenario where they may not be able to avoid their allergens completely. They're doing as best they can, they just can't avoid it completely. The other thing is that, you know, I test an extensive panel of allergens. Sometimes I'm testing patients to 120 or 150 allergens. So I'm testing as many as I possibly can. The back's only so big. We only have access to a certain number of allergens. Um, and so there may be something that they're being exposed to that I just haven't tested them to. Um, and so that's another scenario where they might still continue to break out. Um, despite avoiding the allergens that we know that they're positive to. In those situations, depending on you know, how severe their breakouts are, uh, they may just be able to use the topical steroids like we talked about, um, or they may need to kind of escalate their treatment to some other um, treatment options. Um, some of those treatment options include uh, phototherapy or light therapy um, that involves coming into the office two to three times a week to um, have ultraviolet light exposed to their skin. It's in a controlled environment. We have special um, light therapy techs that administer that treatment. And so it's to a dose or at a dose where it's safe, the patient doesn't get burned, but it is having an anti-inflammatory effect on their skin rash. And so um, the rash will dissipate um, with that phototherapy treatment. That's a, a fairly safe treatment. The wavelength of light that we use hasn't really been shown to cause a significant increase in skin cancer. You know, with ultraviolet light, you always have to consider um, the increase you might have in skin cancer. Unlike a tanning bed where it's uncontrolled, it's not a specific wavelength of light, and there has been some um, reports of increased incidence of skin cancer with um, tanning beds. But in this environment, we really feel like we're, we're being safe with the amount of light that we're using. So that's one option. Um, obviously, that's going to be difficult for some patients, um, considering that they have to come in a few times a week. So if they work or go to school, it's going to be hard for them to come in for those appointments. So then, you know, if somebody's not able to do that, then we talk about some um, oral medications that can be used. These are medications that are used uh, sometimes for immunosuppression, so for like um, chemotherapy for cancer. 
I like to tell my patients that I don't really use them at immunosuppressive doses. I don't want their white blood cell count or basically the, the parameter that we use to look for immunosuppression, I don't want it to drop below normal. If I'm seeing that, that means they're on too high of a dose. So I'm really using what I like to call anti-inflammatory doses of these medications where their blood counts are still normal, but their skin rash is improved because the inflammatory cells or the white blood cells that are in their skin causing their rash have been um, decreased, but the white blood cells in their bloodstream are still normal, still functioning as they should to um, make sure to fight off infection and, and other things. So, um, so I do have a number of patients that are on some of those medications and um, do really well. Um, and they're still avoiding their allergens too. Um, they can't just, you know, dive into a vat of their allergen and, and think that they're not gonna break out even if they're on these medications. But it really helps to subdue the um, inflammation and, and make their life more tolerable.